Hey folks, I'm Rosie and this is my handpan. It's an instrument that looks a bit like a steel drum or some people think it looks like a turtle, but it's called a handpan because we use our hands. There's these little dimples on top and the big ones make a lower note and the little ones make a higher note. This piece is my arrangement of Bill Withers' Lean On Me. I wanted to create a piece to honour a black artist, so I wanted to work on this music arranged for handpan. There was always music in my house growing up. My parents actually met singing in a choir, um, so they were always singing, playing bits of the piano. Uh, in terms of where it was from, it was super eclectic, really a cappella singing music right through to a lot of Beatles. My mum liked a lot of Elvis. So my earliest musical memory was being a part of my mum's choir. Um, when I was young, they'd have me running around giving out flyers and leaflets. But slowly, of course, I couldn't help singing along and joining in. So there was a whole choir of adults and me, apparently, on the edge, ed aged about four, singing along as well. This is one of my raps or performance poetry is called I'm Not a Hashtag. It was inspired by the massive response to the death of George Floyd in June 2020. I was amazed by how many people were posting things on their Facebooks and their Instagrams, people who hadn't been politically minded before. And on the one hand, I was really impressed. I really enjoyed that. But on the other hand, I was worried that it wasn't going to stay. I thought it was just going to be a quick movement and I wanted it to be something that really embedded. So I wrote I'm not just a hashtag. This is not just a hashtag. I'm not just a hashtag. I was black before you cared. It was lockdown life and sourdough madness. Hashtag follow my liberal sadness. You didn't care. It wasn't cool. I don't trust you, white folk, to stay interested. I don't trust you, white folk, to stay woke. Tweeting is fun when Instagram pings and the likes pour in, Facebook gives you the whim. But it won't be hip soon to be no longer talking to white people about race, to leave white fragility in pride of place. You can't keep this up, you won't sustain this pace, I don't trust you, white folk, to stay woke. Prove me I'm wrong, I want this year to be different, maybe 2020 is the year you're all gonna listen. I don't trust you, white folk, yet. You didn't know our suffering before, okay. Or no witness to our trauma before, okay. That stuff doesn't happen over here, okay. You told yourself that, okay. 
but you know better now. Because I'm still black, but today you care. So if you're listening, vow to change yourself and anyone you reach. Everything you learn is something you can teach. I want to trust you, white folk. I do. But you have to stay connected. Every day, every week, every year, this cause is our cause. And your anger, your thirst for change isn't a candle that flares and dies with shares its embers that seethe every day till you're filled with fire and you can't stay quiet make caring a habit when there's no death on stoke you stay awake and listen when we tell you what we go through amplify black voices and care care about me care about this care about all of us i want to trust you white folk i do don't leave me as your hashtag i'm more than just a hashtag This piece is my arrangement of Amazing Grace. So it's a well-known spiritual song. You might have sung it at school, but I wanted to put it onto the handpan and I also wanted to put my own twist. So in the middle, there's a slightly more improv section where I'm not following the tune exactly, but I'm working around the chord structure before I come back to playing the tune at the end. performer until reasonably late for some people. I knew I wanted to be in music from the age of about 14. Before that I wanted to be a rocket scientist. <laughs> Things change. Um, but I, I didn't know what I wanted to do in music. Uh, I thought I wanted to be a composer or, or create music in some way. But as I continued playing percussion, I joined at the back of my school orchestra. I found something I really loved. So I just kept on going. I went to university carried on practicing and practicing uh, and now actually as a performer I do end up writing my own music so it's come back around.
This piece is called Moving On. It's about starting somewhere and ending somewhere completely different. And I was inspired when I was at a, a moon ceremony, which was something that was all about new beginnings and changes. I wanted to chart some of the differences that happen as we move through life. for everyone would be sing. It doesn't matter if you play an instrument or not. If you're interested in music, sing, play on your play on your body, play on the tables. There's music, there's rhythm everywhere. And that's where we all start. Babies are so musical, the way they speak sounds like music. And as we get older, we get shy and we think, oh no, I couldn't possibly make this sound. I'm not a trained instrumentalist. But we all have this capability to create and to make sound. And just joining in, drumming along with a song is making music. And from there, well, you could try an instrument if you want. You can join a choir, you can do whatever you want. But know that that music is already inside you. to music making are sometimes overt, sometimes they're not. I was not from a particularly well-off family, so the fact that I managed, my parents managed to pay for music lessons was really important and we got lots of bursaries and scholarships to help me with that. And as I continued, I saw that I was up against people who hadn't had those, those barriers, people who perhaps had been funded to go do music for a really long time. Um, but there's also more visible ones. When you look around an orchestra, you will not see black people there. There is a really white energy. Anytime I'm in a room, I like to play spot the black person. And you will find that in an 80 person orchestra, 100 person choir, the whole of the Barbican say in, a, in London is full of white people. And that can be really, um, really unsettling because who owns this music? Why is it not allowed? for people that uh, maybe look a certain way. So finding that and fighting that has been really, really huge. And playing percussion as well. A lot of people think that's a boy's job or a boy's instrument, but I don't see why it has to be. I think it's beautiful music and I don't think anyone owns any instruments. So continually fighting and finding places and just leading with the music first has helped me overcome barriers. This is a rap, nothing isn't enough. It's about people who aren't really overtly racist. They're not horrible, they don't shout, 
but they know people that do things. So it's about the people that stand by and they don't speak out when they see something that's wrong. It says nothing isn't enough. You can't do nothing. You can't let things happen around you. You need to be responsible for yourself, speaking up, standing up, and stopping things that aren't right. Racist is a big word. It's hard to make it stick. If I suggest you wear it, you'll be sure it doesn't fit. Yet, when every person with dark skin has suffered abuse, who's doing it? Clearly someone's confused. You don't think I'm subhuman. Undecided if protest is wrong. You rarely say the N-word. <laughs> Only while singing along. You're definitely one of the good guys. You hate the KKK. And honestly, you don't see colour. It doesn't really matter these days. But doing nothing isn't enough anymore. The man who spat on me for my skin wasn't you. But who? The officer who punched me for my skin wasn't you. It's true. It's not you who touches me in the street, who tugs on my hair, who kisses your teeth, stands up over me, shouts, Oi, monkey! Joe's a dark night to follow me. But somebody does because somebody has. But who? Someone you know. They're all part of your system. Just a link in a racist chain, keeping us enslaved. Doing nothing isn't enough anymore. The words that hurt know the mouth that scowl. The tongues that tuck know the eyes that roll. The hands that shove know the fist that hit. Hands that shove no fist that hit. And we all know the knees that kill. For years it's been deemed acceptable that those who die most are always my people. It's all connected. Doing nothing isn't enough anymore. So try something, one word you speak in defense of our fight. Ripple spreads, builds power overnight. Just one utterance of mate that's not on, and change has begun. People, not policy, push forward laws. Alter what you hear behind changed doors. It doesn't work, you're vaguely kind. Engage with your body and mind. You don't have to scream, you don't have to shout. Just speak up, just speak out. You're static, you're silent, twiddling your thumbs, watching nothing get done. Just another link in a racist chain, keeping us enslaved, doing nothing isn't enough anymore. Our system's left unshaken if everything stays the same. Unless you actually fight for us, nothing will ever change. We need a critical mass of population shouting, this is wrong, I need to hear your voice. Join with me, sing my song. Alter policy, make action priority. Call out hypocrisy, acknowledge the colony. Self-assess, honesty, give genuine apologies. But hurtful ideology and inequality. Be brave, have that conversation. Give yourself an education. You're one degree of separation from somebody who wants me out this nation. Search for the closest racist. They won't be far away. And if they live inside your head, make a change today. Trust, this is an issue. Stare at it head on. It's a problem for black people, but it's not a black people problem. It's all of you, sitting still, quietly looking away. Doing nothing isn't enough anymore. Break this chain. Doing nothing isn't enough anymore. Stop doing nothing. It isn't enough anymore. Break this chain. It's never been enough. Do nothing no more. It's never been enough. Do nothing no more. This piece is called Counting Shapes. I'm changing the number of beats in it every single time that you hear it. So if you listen through, you might hear it in three with a kind of waltzy feeling. You might feel it, hear it in four uh, and you might hear it in five of a kind of offbeat feeling. So especially at the end, you can hear all of those changes put one after another. so intrinsic to everyone and I've found that the music that I make and the art I make is so driven by rhythm and whether you want to say that that's in my blood or it's in my culture or it's, it's in my heart that's something that's so at the core of everything I do 
But playing the handpan, that instrument looks like it's from Trinidad and Tobago. It's based on steel pans, but it was actually invented in Switzerland. So it's a real meshing of worlds, and my identity as a mixed race person is always going to be there. I was classically trained at conservatoire, and yeah, I love playing djembes and, and hand percussion. So I'm always going to be a mix and a blend of different influences, which I, I love about myself and I get to bring it into my art. But the spoken word is a really new thing. That's really really focusing in on race and the way that the the melodies that I play have meaning but it's not always clear what that meaning is but with words it's very in your face so I found that uh, as a different art form allows me to be a bit more clear a bit more direct about the specific struggles that I'm facing but then bringing in the musical side and my musical training which I was so lucky to receive to then create another, it's not just mixed race in my skin and in my identity, it's, it's mixed in my music that I make, it's an absolute mess and mixed together. My artistic role models are the people that I'm around. I was so lucky to go on tour with a fantastic singer, really powerful mixed race woman, and I learned so much from watching her perform. Nana Cherry is a real artist, and I got to watch her work for two years. I was standing next to her playing drums. And those powerful people who are around me, who are amazing. I learned so much about performing, I learned so much about music, but I learned so much about carrying myself as well uh, and the way that I move through the world. So seeing people who excel, who are confident and, and joyful with it, they're the people that really inspire me. I love working for Live Music Now. My favourite thing about music is communication. But sometimes when you're sat at the back of an orchestra looking over the heads of loads of people at an audience really far away, you don't always feel like you're connecting with the music that you're making or with your audience. But when you're in a room, a noisy school hall, surrounded by people running around, touching your instrument, listening, there's an immediacy and a feedback that you just don't get in other settings. And I, I love that I get to combine workshop leading with bits of concert presenting through to, of course, the playing, which I really enjoy. And I like having such interactive audiences. Normally, you can lead people in singing and clapping and moving in a way that is really frowned upon in orchestras. <laughs> I want to say a massive thank you to all NHS staff, especially here in Bristol, who've been working tirelessly throughout the pandemic. I know what challenging circumstances that must have been, so I'm so pleased to bring some music and hopefully a little bit of a smile to people who've been working so, so hard. Thank you. Thank you so much to the supporters of Southmead Hospital Charity. Being able to bring live music anywhere right now is so joyful and I love that I get the opportunity to share music with all sorts of people.